guys, welcome to Do It After Smoking. I'm Timmy. Today I want to show you a quick video how to make your own heat sink to use uh, passive cooling on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's so you don't have to use a, um, a fan, because I feel like a fan could go bad and then things could overheat. So, all you gotta do is make a big chunk of metal and use some thermal paste in between that and put your Raspberry Pi on top of that, squish it all together, and now the heat from the processor will now radiate through um, a lot of metal that you got here. So, yeah, and that can also be used for, um, even if you're not overclocking, if, if uh, cause normally a Raspberry Pi runs, runs pretty hot. You know, if you're running it, it's gonna be close to 80 degrees. The cutoff point, 85, is pretty much where it starts throttling, 82. I think it starts throttling down the processor speed. Um, so this is a way to ensure that you're always running a lot cooler. I think um, it, a regular putting it through its paces, you're sitting at about 62 degrees. Where uh, so This is all Celsius, 62 degrees Celsius, where a uh, regular task would normally have you about 75, something like that. So it keeps you a lot cooler, keeps it from uh, worrying about um, any throttling like that so you know your performance is always going at full speed and uh, like I said you can overclock it and uh, you can even put it in a uh, I put it in um, a case like this uh, a handy little game case that I that I made and designed here and, and put some paint in and all that but uh, yeah it, it makes it so I can put it in a, a tightly closed case and I can run the hell out of it and it doesn't overheat it doesn't uh, do any throttling anything like that so it's it's very beneficial. Um, I'm not sure if I can overclock it. I'm not sure if I've done that yet. So in the video, um, we're going to do some testing at the end. We're going to put some uh, some codes into it and uh, put it through some serious stress tests. Um, put all four cores of this processor. Um, I don't know. I think it just goes through some numbers, starts doing a lot of math really fast. I don't know, but it gets really hot real fast. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll we'll do the numbers with it. Um, on just uh, the bare metal and we'll also do it with, uh, with it in the case because uh, I'm actually curious how this reacts so we'll do some of that. Okay now that we have everything we're just going to get to the build. Here we go.
time for some bench testing. We got three Raspberry Pis set up. We got one with no heat sink at all. We got another with a very cheap, tiny little aluminum heat sink. And then we have the one that we just made with all the, uh, the metal and the 16 gauge steel and all that. Um, they're all running the same image on the SD card. They're all going through a uh, splitter and they've all pretty much been sitting at idle, um, getting up to temperature probably about 20 minutes they've all been running so we can go we can cycle through here see what kind of temps we got so um, this is this is the one with no heat sink so at idle no heat sink uh, average probably about 48 degrees so then we're gonna go to the one with the uh, the small aluminum heat sink and at idle that's sitting at 45.1 Somewhere around there, that should fluctuate a little bit. Probably about 45 degrees. And now we're going to go to our big heat sink and see what happens. At idle, we're looking at 38 degrees. So it's it's 10 degrees Celsius colder, uh, cooler than the uh, the Raspberry Pi with no heat sink at all. And that's just at idle. So we're about to crank it up. Uh, we're not going to overclock them yet. We're just going to crank all CPUs to full, full 100%. See what happens. Okay, so we're running the Raspberry Pi with no heat sink. We're at full stress test. We're at 79.5. Uh, sometimes it'll start throttling right around 80. Um, once it gets, yep. Okay, so we got high temp. It's starting to throttle. So. Yeah, Raspberry Pi with no heat sinks at all. If you run it full bore, 100%, eventually it's gonna start throttling. And that's with no case on it, no nothing. Okay, so this is the results of the CPU stress test on the Raspberry Pi with the very cheap aluminum heat sinks. And you can see that it's overheating, it's throttling back. So, we got, we got two Raspberry Pis that are sitting here overheating during our stress test. The one with no heat sink, obviously. I didn't realize the uh, Raspberry Pi with the cheap heat sink would actually over uh, would overheat and start throttling, um, but it is. Okay, now we're looking at our Raspberry Pi with our DIY heat sink that we made, and it is sitting at 54.8 degrees at full CPU stress test. And that puts it, what, at about 7 degrees hotter than the Raspberry Pi with no heat sink sitting at complete idle. So that's, that's drastic. That's awesome. So we are sitting 7 degrees hotter than a Raspberry Pi with no heat sink, and we're sitting at full CPU stress test. So that is very good. We can go, we can go a lot faster before we hit 80 degrees. And, uh, at the point that it starts to throttle backwards. Okay, so this is the recap for our unoverclocked full CPU stress test on Raspberry Pis. We got one that's overheating with no heat sink. We have another one with a heat sink that is actually overheating and throttling. And then we have our DIY heat sink on our Raspberry Pi full stress test. We're looking at 55 degrees. So a very, very drastic improvement, and you made it yourself. So now it's time to push it through the limits. How high can we overclock this? And when we do overclock it, how hot will it go? Okay, and here we are for the overclocking test. We've gotten the other two out of the way because they will obviously overheat since they overheated without even being overclocked. So we got our, um, our DIY heat sink on the Raspberry Pi. We got it, uh, actually look, we'll check out the room temperature. Uh, room temperature is 72.5. And uh, yeah, we are overclocked one point, uh, where are we at, uh, 1.35. So we are uh, sitting at 62, plus average of probably 62 degrees. So yeah, that's overclocked to 1.35. It's over volted to two volts. Uh, SD RAMs over volt, 2 volts, uh, and all the frequencies are at 500, so, yeah. Right, so that's the results of our CPU 
stress tests. We, uh, we had some testing without clocking it. We had some tests while clocking it. And uh, either way, it's beneficial. So this could be used by anybody. So you, I think you should go out, get some, get some screws, get some metal, make one of these. You don't need a fan because a fan could break down on you and overheat it. So yeah, if this is helpful, stay tuned. Subscribe because I got a bunch of videos and a lot more coming. So we'll see ya. Bye.